Hi there, thanks for joining. Today I want to show you some tips and tricks for uh, transferring your sketch to the canvas. First let me show you this. I know that a lot of people like sketching with a pencil or charcoal. Then always make sure that you use a regular pencil, HB for instance. You have different kinds of grades of pencils. You have harder pencils and you have softer pencils as we call it. With a softer pencil, when I take a 6B pencil for instance, you get darker lines, but also when you go over it with something wet, so paint for instance, you see that the graphite will spread and it will contaminate your paint. And with HB you see that is hardly the case. If you sketch with charcoal, you see that it very easily wipes out and it contaminates your paint very easily. So if, for instance, I sketch with charcoal and I grab some, green, some yellow paint, I misspoke already because what will happen is my yellow will become green. When I go over it with paint, the graphite contaminates my paint. And most of the times we don't like this. But I have another tip. We can of course try to seal off the graphite. And we can do that by adding diluted gesso. Here is my gesso. And I add some water. Then I grab a soft brush. A reasonably soft brush. And I just wipe the diluted gesso over my sketch. And you'll see, because it is transparent, you see the sketch shining through the gesso. Now I leave it to dry and then I can start painting. Of course, always first check the transparency on a piece of uh, an old piece of art of yours to check if it is transparent enough. There we go. You see, now my sketch is fixated by the gesso and I can paint on it without polluting my yellow. And by the way, you can also buy transparent gesso nowadays. And another thing you can do, of course, and I think it's the easiest way, is to sketch with paint. And especially with acrylics, that's very nice to do because acrylics, they dry really fast, so you can paint over it again. And they dry water insoluble, so you can paint on top of it and nothing happens. But now let me show you how you can easily transfer your sketch or photo to a canvas or paper. So the first method is this. I have a photograph and say that I want to transfer this person to my sketchbook. I just rub in the back side of the photograph and in this case I do use a soft pencil because in this case I need the graphite to transfer my photo. I turn the photograph around and then I get a pen or a, or a hard pencil and I just trace my photograph. So like this. Oops. Okay. See, so now it's trans transferred and I can start painting. Of course, this works best on panel and on paper because when you do this on canvas, you might damage your canvas. Another well known method is the grid method. Then you print out a photo or you have a photo on your computer and you divide the photograph in squares. After that, you want to divide your canvas or your paper in the same amount of squares. And as you see, when you divide something in squares, you can blow it up as large as you want. And the amount of squares stays, stays the same, of course. And when you've got a grid like this, you get a lot of extra landmarks. But one thing is very important. The canvas or the paper or the panel has to be in the same ratio as your photograph. So for instance, if you have a square photograph and you're gonna paint on a rectangular canvas, then of course you cannot divide, divide it in the same amount of squares. But if you have a rectangular photo, eh, for instance, with the ratio of two to three, if you have a canvas that has a ratio from four to three, then it won't fit either. 
So then of course you can choose to cut things off of your photograph to make it the same ratio. So here for instance I have a photograph that I want to paint on a 40 by 30 uh, centimeters canvas. In Photoshop I made a grid and I made the photo in the same ratio as my canvas. So a 4, by three, uh, four to 3 ratio. And I've divided it in squares and now I can divide my canvas in the same amount of squares. So if I want to do 4 squares I do it like this, 10, 20, 30 and 40 of course. I go over here, 10, 20, 30 and 40. Then draw the lines, the verticals. Then of course the height as well, so every 10 centimeters in this case. I have to do some acrobatic maneuvers again. You see, there we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. When you have bigger canvases, you can use things like this, a T roller, yeah, and you can easily attach that to the sides of the canvas and then you can very quickly measure these squares, for instance, like this, and uh, you can draw the straight lines very easily. So this is a very useful tool for larger canvases and this isn't even a large can canvas. Uh, when I have very big canvases, I still use it. So I can do one end of the canvas from this side then I go over to the other side and measure there again and connect the lines. Now I'll quickly show you how you can approach this when you're, when you're painting. And personally, I like sketching with paint a lot. What I always do is I make a color that is slightly darker than the background color. But in this case, I will keep it fairly dark because otherwise you cannot see what I'm doing on camera. And another thing that I always do is I immediately also make a eraser color, as I call it, the background color. So if I make mistakes, I can use this to cover them. And I make a lot of mistakes because that's always the case in the sketching phase. If you work with the grid or freehand or whatever, you always make mistakes. And that's the way you build your painting, making mistakes and adjust them all the time. So that's, that's normal. Then I grab a brush and I start looking for landmarks. And thanks to the lines, I have a lot of landmarks now. For instance, when I look here where her arm is coming into the frame, so to speak, that's about here. And here you see her arm bending out of, the, of, of this square it touches the line somewhere around here. So somewhere above the middle a bit. So here, for instance. So there's a landmark. Now I can connect these two. And then I see that her shoulder goes like this. So here at one third, about of one third of this line, if you divide this in thirds, I think it's about one third. There it hits my line, uh, the line again. So. There we go. Her chin is a little bit underneath the middle of this line. Here you see. So there, somewhere there is her chin, I think. And I can adjust it uh, later on, that's no problem. That's always with sketching. But this is just about building landmarks. And that's always the sketching phase, how you go about it. So there I see that her hair almost touches the edge. So I do it like this. Then here also as well, I can use the negative space. Eh? So the space that is, so that I don't look at this line of her hair, but that I look at this form, for instance. So it's a sort of form like this, the, the negative space that's surrounding her head. There's, there's something like this. That's also a thing that you can look at when sketching. So here you see a very beautiful landmark. Here her hair hits exactly this intersection. And here we go about like this and then, no, well, you see, you can, with, with, with a little bit of these squares, you can very quickly start sketching. You can very easily build your painting. Well, and of course, then you can go on as much as you want. Then we see something like this. So first start building landmarks and then gradually build your sketch. Oh yeah, uh, I almost forgot to tell, but I've divided my canvas in quite large squares. Uh, sometimes I see people dividing their pictures in all kinds of little squares, one by one centimeter or something like that. Uh, like that. 
um, I would recommend make larger squares. When you have too much of these little squares, you get completely crazy. Then you're gonna count A1 by 27B, things like that. And also this way, uh, at least you train yourself a little bit looking yourself for forms and proportions and things like that. If you use too much squares, then it becomes a little bit if, as if you're a computer or something. So this way you have more easy landmarks, but you also have a little bit of freedom to look for yourself. I like that personally. Everything is allowed in art, so don't mind if you want to do it on squares by one by one is also good. But I would re recommend doing it like this. The eye line, eh? if we draw a, a, a line between her eyes, you see, a line like this, it hits the line here and about here it hits the line here. So this is almost at the half of this line, eh? the, the vertical line. So if I do now uh, connect this dot with that dot, so in a straight line. So of course you mustn't be drunk when you do this, because then you don't get straight lines of course. But you see, uh, this is then the eye line. So another landmark. I can do the same with the brow of course. So if I connect these brows, the, the top sides of the brows, then I see that somewhere here it hits this vertical line and somewhere here at one third like there, there somewhere it hits, uh, yeah, it hits the, the, li the line over there. So you see, brow line, eye line and here, now the nose, nose we can uh, see uh, straight away, mouth we can see, well, one third again, something like that. You can find all these landmarks very easily. It's most of the times beneficial to start looking for the big forms first. So first the outlines, the big forms, if you have the big forms correct. It's no use, for instance, to start detailing the eyes if you don't know if they're exactly at the right spot in the bigger frame. You understand? So first try to get the big picture. Now let me show you this fantastic tool. It's a proportional divider and I really love it. This thing helps to scale a photograph or a drawing, of course. You see, you have two of these pointy things and you have a screw here. I can adjust this screw. I can put it in other holes to adjust the scale in which I want to draw something. Now, for instance, I put the top at the top of his ear and this one at the bottom of his ear and th then you see that the other side is bigger in this case you see so if i want to paint on a bigger canvas i want to paint the same ear but bigger i can use this to paint it in scale but i'll show you how it works so when i drop it in another hole here for instance uh, so i've adjusted it quite a lot and then i screw it back on again if I now do the same thing, you see the top and the bottom side of the ear, then you see that this becomes way more larger. So now I get a more enlarged sketch. Let me show you how this works in real life. <laughs> of course, this was real life as well, but uh, it sounds better when I say it like this. If I have the proportional divider at this scale, you see I cannot reach the top and the downside of his head but then it won't fit on my canvas as well. So I have to adjust the skill in which I want to paint this. And so first always look at what's important that you want to fit on your canvas. If you want to fit only the nose, then it's no problem. But I want to fit in the whole head, of course. So I adjust the skill. So you see, I, I loosen the screw and I just try another hole, you see? So I just show you how you can, could approach this. So now I'll screw it tight back on. I can reach more of the head now, but still it is enough and you still see that the scale is too big. So I still have to adjust it. So there we go again. But once you have the right scale, you can leave it in the hole and you can do the whole painting in the same scale. This is the total size of his head. And does it fit on my canvas? Yes, it does. And uh, do I like it? Maybe I would prefer it a little bit bigger. Then I readjust one slot back. 
Now I have the top side of the head and the downside of the neck and you see now I think it fits more nicely on my canvas. Okay so now we know that this hole is the scale that I want to paint in but I have to check another thing as well the width does the width also fit on my canvas that's all important of course so I just go to the widest part of his head it's something like this you see something like that does that fit on my canvas yes it does so i'm very happy we can start so let me first find the top and the bottom of the total of his head and his neck that i want to have okay so i head over to my canvas and i indicate this is the top of his head and the, the downside of course i already have the, the 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 lowest part now i'm gonna look for this landmark for instance where the ear here, where that touches the edge of the photograph. I can easily find that on my canvas as well, because I know where the edge of my canvas is. So, how high is that landmark there? Where does it touch the edge? From Seen from below, eh? you see? Now I know that this is the same amount in scale. So, I drop here, I put a uh, landmark that is where this point where his ear touches the canvas now let me look for instance for the lowest part of his ear and i can draw a line on my photograph a straight line completely horizontal towards the edge of the photograph again and i can measure this so there again we go and then I have the same size in scale for my canvas again. So I drop it here at the edge of the canvas. So now I know here if I draw a horizontal line here. Somewhere here is the, is the lowest part of his ear. Same I can do for the highest part of his ear. It's just an example eh, for, of how to use this. I mean you can start measuring other things as well. That doesn't matter. So again, I look at the things that I certainly know and I certainly know where the edge is. And now I know where the absolute height of his ear is. So I've adjusted my scale divider. And then when I go over here, I know the down the, the lowest part. And I know here that here I ha can put again a horizontal line between these two lines his ear will fit in my painting in the end. Now let us say we want to find this line of his, the, the, play, the line where his ear hits the side of his cheek. If I connect this line with this line, I get a landmark here and I already have this line, but I don't have this landmark yet. So now I measure this landmark so I'll grab the divider again and I'll put it like this. So this is the small side, this is the larger side. I go to my canvas and now I know that this is the, this point, this point. So here his ear does something like this and this line goes up a little bit. And you see if you compare this sketch line with the edge of the photograph, you see that it tapers a little bit. It goes a little bit like this. I think when I do it freehand, I think somewhere here we'll get this landmark, but you can check. I look at that horizontal line, so like this. Now I go back to my painting and you see, I did it reasonably right. So this line is this line of his cheek. Now, and of course, then you can measure all kinds of things, but you can also now freehand have from this point, I can say, ah, I have a, a negative space over there, like this. So, and from there, from that landmark, it goes a little bit like this, his ear. Now let us, for instance, find uh, the, the, this part, his, the, the downside of his chin. So again, here I draw a horizontal line so the chin line I'm gonna find, I'm trying to find. So again, I go to over to this edge because that's the certainty that I have. Then this is the height and I go over to my canvas. So at this height, somewhere here on this horizontal line, his chin will connect. 
first let us make a sort of a rectangle in which his head fits. So if I go uh, upward from, from this horizontal line like this, I try to find a place where I can make a vertical line and just as vertical as the side of my photograph because then I have certainties. You see, like this. If I can find this line in my picture here, then again I can have a lot of landmarks because I know that here his cheekbone hits that line and here his eyebrow line hits that line and these other things I can easily uh, find as well then. So this can be a very important line and the same we can do at the top of his head from this line. So you see, there it hits the top of his head. It's a straight line, horizontal. But let me uh, do this line first. So where is this point? We have this horizontal line already. I grab the scale divider and these are two certain points that I have. I have them here and uh, th this line I have as well on my canvas. Then I turn the divider around and I go over here and here is my landmark, my spot, the corner of this line. So from here I can go upwards and yeah, you see, this is, it's, it's, it's such fun to do this. Okay, now we're going to find this point. And the highest point of his head on this line. I'll put it between these two points, you see. Then I head over here and there we go. There is, uh, we knew that already, of course. I forgot that I already <laughs> searched for the, the, the height of his head. But there you have it. So his whole head must fit in this rectangle because we have that on the photograph as well. So let us look for some more landmarks, don't you think? Uh, for instance, where does his chin end? Now, measure between these two points. There it goes. Here the chin of this man ends and it goes upward like this. I don't, and, and I can't freehand sketch, I can do like this. I don't know where it touches, exactly touches this edge, but I'm gonna find out. So now I go over to our landmark where his cheekbone touches the, the line, you see, between these two points. I take it over to here. I hope I, <laughs> I have to make all kinds of acrobatic moves again to try to show it the best as I can. But here his cheekbone hits that line. So now I know that the rest of his chin yeah, and you can always adjust it later on, but it is something like this. And here, something like this will happen. I know already a little bit, you see, sketching with, uh, with paint. And then his brow hits this line somewhere, but we can, again, we can measure. So here and here, bam, there we have it. I go over to this side and you see, I was a little bit too high. I, is that true, what I say? Yeah, here it hits it. So my sketch wasn't good, you see, I can correct myself now. Here his eyebrow hits the, the side of the canvas, so I have to do it more like this. So again here, that's why I have this light paint. I can erase the wrong sketch lines that I've made, you see? So here is his cheekbone, there goes his line like this. So his brow is somewhere like here. So if I search for this point, there we go again. I grab this and this, get it over here. There we are. And then his hair goes something like this and this. Don't know where it has to stop. So from this point to here, for instance, how big is that distance? And I have to be sure that I'm on a vertical line. Eh? So if I measure it like this, it's not gonna work, of course. So this is a vertical line. Then I go over here, here. I was almost right, you see. And then it goes a little bit like this, of course. And then we have here that his forehead uh, comes out something like this. I think I must go on more towards this side like this. So let's check 
this point, for instance, hey, you see now I start sketching freehand as well, and then I can easily check myself. You see, this is correct. So that first line I already saw, mm, it's not gonna work. And now that we know that his brow touches this line, for instance, if again, I look for a brow line, you see, I can make a straight line between the brows. You see, it is a little bit diagonal because it's a three quarter portrait. So that's perspective. But then you can see if I find this point, I can connect this point with this point. So where is this point? I drop a line vertically from the hairline. So uh, at this point I have to find first. So there we go again, measure, measure. That's over here. From here, if I drop a vertical line downwards, then somewhere I have to hit this point. So I measure where, how high does that point have, has to be there. So now I can connect this point, eh? that was this point with this point, and then I have the brow line. And then I know a lot more already. The eye socket will go like this. You see, and so you build and build and build. You can go on. So if you, if you look with the sketcher's eyes, uh, eyes of someone who's sketching, then you can simplify this by seeing it something like this. So this point is an important point and I can easily find it because I have this vertical line now. Yeah, this vertical line here. So I measure this distance between these two dots. Uh, first, the height. How far do I have to drop the point down on that line? It's over here. Then I measure the width between these two. Something like this. Yes. There we go. Uh, so this has to be a horizontal line. So now I know this part. So his hair goes on like this. And then it goes something like this. And then there's a line that goes towards his ear. So there. You see, so it gets easier and easier. You get more landmarks. It gets easier to draw freehand as well. So now if I uh, do it a little bit freehand and then I can uh, start sketching because now I know a line will go a little bit downward like this from here, you see, and then it reaches the back of his head. And here is a little bit of hair that's a bit upright like that. And here's a line that's more like this diagonal upward so there we go his nose this line a diagonal line again it is parallel at this line because it's eh, the same goes for the mouth it's a line like this but uh, this is an important point for instance eh? the, the 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 bottom of his nose i can drop a straight line down here and measure this okay it's so over here, then I can go upward, see somewhere there, and then I measure this, it's here. So now I know, okay, this diagonal has to be uh, parallel to that one, then his nose will somewhere, will be somewhere around here. You see, and then you can drop in more lines and you can do a little bit freehand again and now adjust. So another point on that vertical line is the, this point of his mouth. So uh, between the lips, the darkest part there. So I grab that distance and I drop it in here. Then I know that his mouth, the line of his mouth is somewhere here. Here is done. And then I, uh, well, I sketch myself a little bit. The top of his, the top lip, bottom lip darker part here underneath his lip of course a little bit of a beard thing so and then it goes like there oh yeah his mustache this point where is that so i'll drop a vertical line here so like this whoop and whoop. i drop a vertical line in here and uh, measure the height of that line it's there and there so here his lip can be a little bit longer as well. So you see, and here his mustache stops. And that's quite an important point to know. 
because then as well we have a little bit of this bearded side here, his uh, cheekbone. Well, and then we go from here, we see the neckline. And here we can drop the neckline as well. This is his collar. Whoop. There we go like that. And here it goes like this. And something like this. So, and then of course, here his brow and then the eye socket. There we go, an eye like this top of his nose but you you get the idea i hope so uh, it's very fun i like it very much but but i like puzzling i have to say so uh yeah maybe i'm a little bit strange i don't know Hep, i go upward so here his nostril will end okay that's much wider than i have done here you see i was completely off so side of his nose eye socket here his tear duct for instance you see if I drop this line upward again I have another landmark and you see I can so I can prolong this line more like here here's somewhere his tear duct has to be but how high we can check boom boom and I go over here I was quite of a little bit right <laughs> Another way of saying that you're uh, way off, a little bit, right? So, and these are the first steps to a new piece of art for in the museum, of course. And of course, there's another way that you can uh, uh, transfer your sketch or photo, and that is by using a beamer or a projector or something like that. Personally, I find it rather difficult. I have a kind of a beamer. Uh, let's take a look. I don't use them that often. Where is it? It's over here. So it's a thing like this. I'm always struggling with the settings of this thing and adjusting it and uh, things like that. You, 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 you can have distortions very easily if it's not projecting at the right angle and all kind of stuff like that. And then you have to be painting in the dark. I don't like painting in the dark. So, but, uh, but other people like it and it's great. It's a great tool. Uh, but don't ask me too much about these things. I don't uh, know uh, enough of, of them. So I cannot tell more than that, to be honest. I only use it when I have to paint very large canvases. Then, it's, uh, then it saves me a lot of time. Oh yeah, and by the way, that's an important thing to mention, of course. We use all these tools to save time. Huh? Because we can sketch freehand, but it takes hours and hours. Uh, you know that as well as I do. If you want to do everything correctly, if you want to have the proportions uh, totally spot on, then that's very difficult when you do it freehand. It just is, it is fun, but I wanted to mention that shortly because sometimes people uh, look at it as a sort of cheating, but I don't see it that way. You can, in art, you, can, you are allowed to use everything you want, uh, all tools that you can uh, get. It's always been like that. And of course, it's very good to train yourself uh, drawing on site, so freehand. But you can do that at moments that it suited you, suits you. So I mean by that, I, I personally still like drawing freehand as well, but I do it at a moment that it suits me, that, that I, I like to do that. But when I want to make a painting, I just want to quickly uh, begin painting as quick as possible. So that's, uh, that's the way I go about it. And, uh, but there is no cheating because the only thing I think is cheating is that when I grab the Mona Lisa or out of the Louvre and I put on my own signature, that's, uh, that's kind of cheating. But uh, now I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.